Grand Rising, my friends. <laughs> my wife gets on my back about that. <laughs> this is saying, hey, you know, I'm just playing around. My homeboys know where it's from. They, what's up? How are you? Good looking there at the most beautiful subscribers in the galaxy and several galaxies and a fourth of the universe. We just moving on. So in other words, if you're subscribed, you're, you must feel good about yourself being such a radiant beacon of beauty in this existence. If you're new here, welcome. What's up? Join us. Pull up a chair and um, let's get into it. The crypto market is not doing too well today. Wah, wah, wah. Market cap down to two point five trillion. I mean, look, that sounds crazy to say the market two point five trillion. The market not doing well when you have Avalanche up seventy percent on a week and Crypto.com up some crazy amount. Oh, that's seventy percent on a week and Avalanche up fifty, almost fifty percent on the week. So. The the market is doing well and L run up sixty two percent. Saw some guys talking about this earlier. I'm gonna give a check out to that and Decentraland continues to do well and so I'm sure Santa be in the top ten. <laughs> Santa was up ninety percent for the week, so the bull market still continues. Healthy correction, shake out any of the weekends before we probably have an escalation going up a little bit past the Thanksgiving weekend, but none of this is financial advice, relationship advice, medical advice, or anything to be construed as advice in any shape, form, or fashion. This is entertainment, fun times, discussions amongst people who are peers and friends. Stock market. Just quickly, Bitcoin at 56,925, Ethereum at 4,147, Binance 566, Solana 219, Cardano $1.80, XRP 105, Polkadot 3965, Avalanche moving on. Hey, look, the Time Wonderland, I like some of the products they're doing on uh, the Abracadabra on Avalanche, $135.65. Dogecoin at 22 cents. Shiba Inu at four zeros 43. Uh, Crypto.com at 76 cents. Terra at $41. I'm not going through all everything. We'll go through 200. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the stock market wasn't too hot today. You know, barely positive for the Dow. NASDAQ down. 1.26%, S&P down um, about a third of a percent, but Apple is boom. Look at this, Apple at 161 bucks. You got to like that. I think Tesla had a fairly good day as well. There's somebody else I saw that said, wow, they had a pretty good day. Cisco had a fairly good day. Goldman Sachs, are they? Yeah, they're in stories for the day. Ethereum almost at a million here, I think, yeah. Almost at a million. So, if there's someone in your life who has made an impact, made you a better human being, you want to write something kind about them down in the comment section and send them this video and say, look, I've immortalized my admiration for you on the internet forever on a madman's page or channel. But what does that mean? What does anything really mean in the end? Think about that. Send this to them. Share, share, share. Uh, so, we've been talking about this. I used the word stealthy, and if anybody who thought it wasn't, it is a word you can use. But we've talked about this image slash object in the sky several times, and we think, or they think, it is the RQ-180, Secret Unmanned Spy Plane Spotted Over Area 51. Now, I've talked about it once before, and I think I mentioned um, it was a, a previous image of it. So I believe over somewhere in the southern United States, I want to say Texas, but I'm not 100% on that. And as well, another image has now appeared 
close to Groom Link, which is known as also Paradise Ranch, which is also known as Dreamland, which is also known as Area 51. Coming from the direction of Edwards Air Force Base, which is in California. So basically some people have taken this picture and these are the three lined up, look like the same shape. Also at Groom Lake at the time, they saw this truck coming out, which was a truck emerged from Groom Lake with an apparent Soviet made radar system on board while the vehicle in the sky they saw made its appearance. And, you know, we do that a lot using foreign threat sensors, air defense to see exactly what we can get away with. So this was the, I believe this was the picture of Mr. Repository for a little racetrack daylight over in mid October. One image of it, this was the one from the Philippines. Yeah, this is the one from the Philippines. This is a rendition, a, a notional concept. We talked about notional concept of the fighter jets that the Navy are preparing and how it may not look exactly like, but get close to the design. Or maybe not, you know, never know. But this just appears that they make the, the, the drawing based on the pho uh, photographs. So the latest sighting of the apparent RQ spotted over Area 51, October 30th. You can see there. A bat shaped appearance. So we have at least unmanned flying drones. And I, and I don't believe this is a B, um, what is it, a B 21 Raider? A B 21 Raider? Our new, we have a new bomber that's coming. I think that's too small for it. We'll see. But keep an eye on uh, the aviation and the technology that we have because it's look this is where a lot of money is going to be to be made it's also just fascinating as is but a lot of money to be made there chinese satellite hints at space warfare prowess by dodging u.s surveillance now i'm going to butcher this hour that i butcher a lot of words i get a bunch of stuff wrong it is what it is you gotta just in life do the best you can as much as you can. And at the end, you'll be happy with your results. You, you won't have any regrets as long as you know you did your best. The Xinjiang 20, China's most advanced communication satellite, was approached by U.S. surveillance satellite but rep reportedly moved away at speed. So it's common for satellites to have anti-collision technology. But according to this, which is one of their newer satellites, and they feel it's its heaviest satellite finding where the, some of the wording was at. said um, it, it had an ability to avoid being followed by a spying U.S. satellite hint and a, a capability in potential space warfare. In July, China's heaviest and most advanced communication satellite was approached in parallel by a U.S. space surveillance satellite because that's what we do. We keep an eye on everybody, things out there. And it, and it reportedly... Moved away rapidly from the area <laughs> more than we could um, check it. And now, so China, look, we, we, we talk about China a lot here because it is the United States, and that's where I live at, the United States' biggest competitor on an international stage. And so, if not even from a competition standpoint, just from an admiration standpoint, you got to keep an eye on, you know, uh, keep your enemies, keep your friends close, your enemies even closer. So anything you can do, we got to be able to do better. Also, this was kind of crazy. They said that when they put another satellite in space, oh, I was about to say, what the heck was that? But that, um, something started playing in the, uh, <laughs> on this page that they also, the, when another Chinese satellite took its position in geosynchronous orbit orbit the upper stage of the rocket that delivered the satellite had been loaded with extra fuel to enable it to stay parallel to it to act as a decoy to give it some time to kind of confuse what you you know anyone united states russia or you know all the countries india any country uh france britain australia probably every country J japan that that um Korea that are watching what 
other countries are doing in space. Give it a little bit of time to figure things out. They've also, China has launched several satellites said to be scavengers fitted with robotic arms to grab and steer space debris so it burns up in the Earth's atmosphere. Sounds good, but the Pentagon worry could also go grab other people's satellites and throw it down. And some of the technology, I mean, the wording here it had me cracking up because it's so... They launched one in um, uh, the Shenzhen 17 with a robotic arm that made some manu unusual maneuvers appearing, like trying to position itself how it would look to position itself above other countries' satellite in orbit, right? Then they said that the mission was to test high orbit space debris observation technologies. In my mind, I was just thinking, hey, that meant a hey, high or how to, how to take down all the everybody else satellites if we had to. And they put the, the Shenzhen 21 in space, which is the experimental validation. And we'll talk about that in a day or two because it was something very interesting in that launch, which ties into the launch from 2018 as well with the, the upper that took a position um, near the satellite initially. Goldman Sachs is giving hedge fund clients crypto research from data firm The Block. Hedge fund and other clients begin receiving the reports via the investment bank's marquee, quote unquote, marquee digital platform. The first report available to Goldman clients was an overview of decentralized finance protocols on Ethereum network. So, you know, that mean Ohm, Uniswap. Probably curve yield, you know, the, the major players. So. Goldman Sachs clients are getting involved in this. And I'm, look, I'll be begging my friends to say, what, I, what, do, I, what do I have to do? I'm, I literally now start making videos so y'all can watch me do it step by step. Please. It's going to be so much crazy money made in this. You know, and, and I'm, you know, you can do it with 10 to 15 bucks. Just start using the protocols and, and, and if you get the airdrops, you know what I mean? Let alone the appreciation for your decisions in terms of the assets you buy but just some of the stuff is just using them and getting the free airdrops goldman sachs has say stare but i'm guessing means started giving his institutional trading clients research reports from crypto news and data firm the block Hedge fund and other clients began receiving the reports thursday via investment banks marquee digital platform the first reports were an overview of decentralized finance protocols on the Ethereum network in an effort to provide reliable, relevant digital asset content research. GS Digital Assets, Goldman Sachs Digital Assets, is now providing exclusive access to selected reports from the block research. We'll do some research to see what the block been saying about decentralized finance protocols on the Ethereum name chain that is so important for Goldman uh, Sachs to find out about. So... It's beyond saying that it's here, right, moving on, legislation, smegismation. It's all, I mean, look, it's all good. It's legislation and everything, that's fine. But it's going to be so much money to be made in the next several years. This is still beyond early to ground floor. We putting in the ground floor now. Be a part of helping to build the ground floor is what I would say. El Salvador president said he would use some of this country's Bitcoin profit to build 20 schools. And this is awesome. So he's just talking smack. He was in here saying, hey, what do you, I want to announce with that with a few million that we have left from the profits of the Bitcoin, we're going to build the first 20 schools fully equipped and modern. The funny thing is that the opposition was against the Bitcoin law and the purchase of Bitcoin. Thank God we did not pay attention to them and the profits that they did not want to exist will benefit many animals. Because remember, they were building animal hospitals as well. So I mean, he, he thumbing his nose at everyone who, t you know, told them to not do it and has been showing and proving like, hey, within span of months, we've been building animal hospitals and schools. So, like I said, to me, the jury's still out. Some things, you know, further reading, they were saying like that, that possibly that Supreme Court was corrupt, but he got rid of everybody in there. Everybody was corrupt. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye. We're not getting too hyped about anything. I mean, look, we're happy that a country in El Salvador is a country for those who didn't know. It's a joke. Um, I know I know a couple of El Salvadorians. I just, um, a lot of people, like I said, where I, where I grew up, 
is very America centric. And, you know, you start to expand your worldview to see more of the world and, and, and learn that it's a bigger place and then understand we bigger part of a much bigger universe. So with all that, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.